Harmony is the meaning of life. What is that harmony? I will present it structurally as conceived by Plato, St. Paul, and me. I am Andrus Kulikauskas. This is Math for Wisdom. I have been creating a series of videos on the meaning of life, and today I'll be pulling uh, together these notions to uh, explain what I mean. How uh, we internalize and how God immortalizes this relationship that we have. And I will explain it structurally uh, in terms of um, concepts that get permuted in three different ways. So if you've been watching uh, this uh, series, you'll know about uh, two basic uh, structures, uh, which I call divisions of everything. One is the learning cycle of taking a stand, following through and reflecting, taking a stand, following through and reflecting, um, by which we participate, by which we engage life. And another is four levels of knowledge, whether, what, how, why. So we can know whether, we can know what, we can know how, we can know why. And um, they're organized uh, as these arrows do. Uh, so why would be the highest level of knowledge and why goes down to whether. And uh, those are extreme levels of knowledge and basically ignorance. And the more day-to-day -day type of knowledge that we have is know-how and know-what. So know-how is higher than know-what. When our mind shifts from knowing how to knowing what, then we're able to shift from knowing why to knowing whether. And there's a way to think about that, actually. Uh, uh, you can think of it this way, that the unconscious is storing this knowledge of what um, in billions of neurons. Uh, so the conscious is trying to say maybe the same thing, but in terms of a conceptual language uh, of blueprints, of uh, actually maybe slots instead of things, it'd be a language of slots that can be filled in by variables, et cetera, by questions. And those questions then we're trying to match up with the answers that our unconscious provides. So that know-how is this knowledge of questions. But uh, what the consciousness does is it's keeping the those two from getting matched prematurely. It's waiting to see when the right time will be to release the brake and to hardwire it. And that's our knowledge why. You know, why this is all valid, why this is all correct, uh, why this is all um, worth uh, preserving and worth uh, saving. So, and then knowing whether, well, uh, knowing whether is like this... Um, knowledge let's say you're a messenger and you carry a message yes or no so that's knowledge but you have no idea what it means right you're sent from one kingdom to another kingdom and maybe it means that a marriage proposal has uh, been uh, accepted or maybe it means that a war has begun you don't know <laughs> so you know whether it's kind of like knowing nothing. You know whether, you know if it's yes or if it's no, but you don't have any of the context. So that's the deepest, basically absolute ignorance in a certain sense, but still important knowledge. Uh, so knowledge needs all four levels. And um, in, in this language of wondrous wisdom, what I'm trying to say is that uh, in our consciousness, if you remove all of the... Um, personal experiences that the unconscious is storing. If you let go of all of this conceptual language that the conscious has built up, and you just look at the empty room where your consciousness uh, governs and tries to relate these things, if you can kind of clear that out, then you can see that empty room, its shape, the doors, the, the, the construction. And that gives you a language uh, that we know in some sense because that's the language of our life experience. But it's um, 
not really visible to us through all this clutter. So I'm trying to declutter our minds and explain that there is this absolute truth inside of us, which is, I, I think it's um, true for any system, I, I suspect. So that's the idea is to have an investigatory community where we work on this together. So I'm presenting in this longer series of videos about wondrous wisdom, um, this type of... Um, language, this uh, vocabulary and grammar, you could say, of the consciousness uh, and, and the life that we experience um, when we think very abstractly, you know, when we, but it's the framework for everything we do, I think. So one of the, uh, in studying this, you know, come up with different uh, observations. And so this was back in 1989, I was in Soviet occupied Lithuania. And I was uh, studying uh, just independently my philosophy, how things could fit together. And I, I noticed this uh, curious thing that like in Plato, um, you have, um, he has a system of uh, four, he would call them virtues, their values um, from his uh, book Republic. Uh, and so they exhibit this three cycle of taking a stand, following through and reflecting, which we could say like being, doing, thinking but also these levels of knowledge, okay? So in his system, um, there would be um, uh, a, the virtue or the value of the city is justice. And he talks about three castes. There's the uh, farmers and craftsmen, which are basically the subjects. They should be obeying. And then there is the, um, although everybody should be obeying, but uh, there's also the warriors. They also need to have courage, okay? And then uh, there's the rulers. Uh, they should be wise. But I wrote here beauty because uh, one of the key aspects for wisdom is this uh, feeling of what is truly beautiful. You know, like you can see like these types of structures, uh, philosophical structures. It's very beautiful. Many people just do never develop that aesthetic. Uh, so they, they're not, uh, their mind's not attuned to that. So this is for attuning to that beauty. And so that's a system by Plato. And then St. Paul, um, I, in the previous video, I studied and read uh, excerpts uh, from, well, I actually read the whole thing, his uh, hymn to love, as it is known, and um, where he talks about love, hope, and um, faith. Okay. So he has, uh, and I add to these, loyalty to round that out, so I'll explain that. And then by permuting these things, I have my own um, uh, system of duty, caring, honesty, and intimacy. So that's what I'll be talking about today, uh, how these relate, how the system works, how does that express the meaning of life? And so, as I mentioned, this is part of a series um, where I gave an introduction, quite long, <laughs> And then I specifically focused on these threesome and foursome, uh, what um, they are, how they're related by these three minds, the unconscious, conscious, consciousness. And then I giving this uh, vital, uh, these three examples from Plato, St. Paul and me, where we can see how um, they fit together and you can permute the ways they fit together in three different ways. You can color it so to speak, in three different ways. And But that turned out to be quite a long video. And so uh, I have divided it up into three parts, A, B, C. Today is C. So today I will conclude with this part of the series. And then going forward, we'll talk more about uh, these different values, how they fit together. And uh, we'll talk about what I call version 2.0. But um, And I'll mention that today. Um, how to kind of like uh, rethink this in a way that um, maybe simplifies it structurally and kind of like ex expresses it more from an internal point of view, how we experience it internally. Uh, just simply, it'll be about this idea of like why, you know, this beauty, uh, is that the reason why? Or is the fact that we obey, let's say, is that the reason why, you know? It's kind of depending on what uh, your vantage point is. So that'll be a different vantage point. Uh, and then finally, where this leads to further research. 
on meaning and on life and on the meaning of life. So this is where I was in 1989. I had noticed, um, you know, I'd been collecting all kinds of examples of the threesome, this division of everything into three perspectives, the learning cycle, and uh, collecting examples of the foursome for levels of knowledge. And so uh, noticing that sometimes they seem to be kind of intertwined. Okay, so in Plato's system, um, there's uh, there's three casts. There seems to one that's doing, that's the warriors. And there seems to be one that's thinking, uh, that's the rulers. And maybe there seems to be one that's being, those are the craftsmen and the, and the, uh, they should just, you know, be, they, they kind of, are the being of the city. And then the city overall is also this, I would feel this kind of like the being. But with St. Paul, um, we have that, uh, oh, and maybe just to go back in terms of levels of knowledge, you know, so the rulers, they know why. They know the big picture. The warriors, uh, they don't know why, they don't think that, but they know how. They do know how to... Um, they have what Plato calls true opinion, which means that uh, they do know not just how to get things done, um, how to make this um, uh, kingdom governable, so to speak, but they know um, how to cling to their opinion, okay, so that they're not affected by, um, you know, whether they're happy or unhappy or pleasures or pains, you know. They know how to really embrace an opinion. Whereas the um, uh, the ordinary people, the craftsmen, the trades people, um, they have what Plato calls false opinion. You know, they would just have any old kind of opinion. So um, it's very important that uh, they simply have the opinion that they shouldn't be in charge. You know, somebody else should be in charge. who's kind of thinking more broadly. So that, that would be called, uh, temp in translations, it's called temperance or moderation. Uh, I call it obeying, and then we'll maybe see why. Um, so that's Plato. Now, for the case of St. Paul, he talks about love, hope, and um, uh, faith, which I'm writing as believing. He doesn't have a fourth one, but I'll add loyalty. I'll explain. Uh, and so I think of love as active. You know, you're doing, let's say. And then I think of... Um, Faith as thinking, it's what you, you know, it's the position that you have in your mind. Um, uh, and then I have hope is kind of like a being, you know, it's like the stand that you take, or it's just, uh, or maybe like where you stand. So, um, but the similarity, so first it's okay, they're different colors, and in fact, they seem to be permuted. You go from, you know, from red to yellow, blue to red, I uh, yellow to blue in terms of these colors of taking a stand, following through, reflecting. But there are relations, you know, so trying to think. And so one, one thing is that, um, and you can kind of see it here, like what's the difference between obeying and justice? And what would be this fourth, if, if I could think about it? Well, obeying and justice are kind of talking about the same thing, but a big difference, you know, or it could be moderation and justice that moderation is what you experience internally, okay? Justice is about the system overall, like how it looks externally. So it's a harmony of the external world. If there's justice in a city, it has harmony externally. But for there to be justice externally, uh, it's really uh, makes everything straightforward if everybody is moderate, if everybody's temperate, and certainly if everyone's obedient. And of course, that means absolutely everybody, right? If, if people are obedient, then justice seems to be a natural uh, consequence. So this idea that, oh, this is a, what I call an external perspective, justice, and obeying would be the internal perspective. Now, among these, believing, hoping, love, I had the feeling, you know, believing is like that internal perspective. It's basically like my internal attitude that I that I, uh, how I'm looking at things. What would be the external version of that on the outside? And I thought, well, I would call that loyalty. Okay. So if you're loyal to somebody, it's kind of like, uh, you know, believing means you're clinging basically to, to them. 
okay? Uh, if you believe in them or if you believe something, you're clinging to that. Um, if if you, um, you know, it's a choice. Like knowing, you know, you could know and then you could uh, change your mind and not know. But believing, you kind of do it despite perhaps what you know or, or not know. It's impervious to that. So, so believing is this uh, internal um, uh, attitude, internal stance. So the external version, I think, would be like loyalty, where it's say, well, and see, so loyalty, if someone's loyal to you, you don't know what's on inside of them. You just know how they appear, how, you know, they behave, or just, you know, what the upshot is. The upshot is that they're always, let's say, on your side, right? They're always uh, true to you in some way, you know, whatever that should mean. But believing means that it's not like that they're presenting that. It's that's on the inside, that they actually have uh, have received uh, that inside of them. And then uh, courage and hope. I think of uh, courage as a virtue, which, uh, and we'll see this in the next slide. Maybe I'll go there right now. I think of the virtue of courage saying that, look, I took a stand, but will I do it? Okay. So there's this learning cycle. You take a stand, you follow through, you reflect, like with a scientific experiment. You have a hypothesis, you do the experiment, uh, then you look at the results. Then you maybe have the same hypothesis or a different hypothesis, but you continue, you know, or an improved hypothesis. So courage is saying, look, you took a stand. Are you going to do it? Right? You're on the battlefield. You know, you were prepared for this all your life. You trained and, and you, you took an oath, perhaps, right? And now are you going to fight to, to the death? Oh, horrible. So that's courage, is, and it's pointing you forward, okay? Now, honesty says, you know, after the battle, for example, I'll say that, how did it go, right? You did it, you fought, but to take a look and say, man, we lost bad, or to say, no, you know, that was a great victory, right? But to be honest, um, you know, because you may not want to look at what you did. You may not want to uh, think about it, right? And then when you're reflecting, you may have all these things to, you know, all these ways to interpret it, all these uh, observations. But what are you going to uh, take out of that? You know, where are you going to make your stand? So the idea is that uh, hope is saying, this is how I'm going to take it. This is how I'm going to interpret it. This is how I'm going to uh, commit myself, you know, having uh, this uh, fully cognizant uh, understanding of what it's, you know, but I have hope that, let's say, our nation will, uh, will persist. I have hope that our family will make it through. You know, I have hope that uh, I can, um, I can let's say uh, pursue my studies, and maybe they'll you know maybe they'll be meaningful. So that's these three virtues, and so uh, if we um, and I guess I've colored them based on the color they're going to. So courage, I think of well because it's enabling. It's saying that the action will happen, or the reflection will happen, or the taking of a stand will happen. So I think of hope and courage as virtues. And so then based on that, it's kind of like, well, what is love and what is this uh, other thing, right? And so virtue is like kind of like an active thing. You know, it allows for that. It's how things happen, let's say. And then pause it. You know, what's this, you know, other one? Well, you know, love plays this role. Like that's, St. Paul emphasizes that's the most important virtue. That's the why. And when we uh, looked at his passage, uh, he kind of talked about knowledge, like, we will we know now as children, but then we'll know as adults. So kind of like love being the most important is in a sense like as adults, we will see that like it's the love that's the most important. That's giving you the real big picture. Love does. Whereas uh, hope is um, partial knowledge. Believing is partial knowledge. Right? That kind of makes sense. You know, if you believe in your hope, but you're doing your half, but there's something more. Whereas if you love, you're, you're basically one with God, right? You, there's there's no lack of knowledge as there is with hope and belief and loyalty. You know, loyalty has complete lack of knowledge, just loyal, right? Uh, sometimes willful, blind <laughs> lack of knowledge. Uh, so, 
So love would be this why, and then just saying, okay, but what do we mean by that love? And uh, this is maybe the realist part of me, but I kind of thought like, well, there's something crucial about that love. Like it's not cerebral, you know, it's the mushy kind of love. And it's really, it is emotional type of love. Like it's, and it's a positive emotion. It's the opposite of hate. So that's one way to say it. You know, like the, that's one way I thought about it. Like hope doesn't have an opposite. You see, there's no opposite that you're not going to go around that circle. You see, there's no backwards. You never go from falling to your that. It's simply a matter of like, when will you be courageous? You know, when will you do that? But there isn't any opposite. Uh, you don't, but that's not doing it's like not really the opposite of doing it not doing it is you're waiting when are you going to do it right so it's not like you made a choice between love and hate positive and negative okay so that's these structural clues this is how kind of helped me to piece it together or i think i pieced it together and so okay so as an emotion that's where love uh, is this positive negative and you see then this idea that well wisdom it's not really uh, for what I'm talking about, like for this much. These rulers, they're not wise in a cerebral how type of way. Like they're wise in a way where like they're identifying like with the big picture, with God's point of view, you know, with the however you think of the big picture spirit. Right. But like and they experience that as beauty. Right. Like you think through beauty. You see that this is the, the beauty. The opposite would be disgusting, ugly. Like to do selfish things, to do the wrong things, to uh, that would be just icky. That would be yucky. That would be disgusting, right? Like that just would not be. So, um, so okay, so that's, if you think of it as feelings, that's how I thought it would make more uh, sense. Like that's really where we're coming from. Now in version 2.0, I'll be explaining that, uh, that may be a sign. Actually, it's not really why. That's more like the what in from that different vantage point. Okay. But that's all right. Um, we're looking back at version 1.0. That's like from the 1989 young, the young Andrus versus the old Andrus, like the young Wittgenstein versus the old Wittgenstein, right? But we're kind of like compatible, I think. So, okay. So how do I saw? Well, I thought, well, then I can see the colors are permuted then. Um, but um, so there's a third one missing, obviously, especially considering that you don't go backwards in that circle. I thought, oh, that doesn't, uh, that, would, that would just be a mess. And I don't think, I, I don't really see uh, where that would lead. I don't understand where they're going. Now, you may be the Einstein who will figure out that, hey, you know, you missed all these. There's three more, let's say, or whatever. You know, that's why we have math for wisdom. That's why we have wondrous wisdom is that we can try to, um, make this a, a language that other people can understand that's real, that reflects reality from your point of view, just as it's, I think it is from my point of view. So what is that uh, third um, system? Uh, it is based not on uh, courage or hope, but like honesty. I am an honest person. My value, uh, deepest value in life, which includes all of my other values, is living by truth. So I've always had this kind of like, uh, uh, whether it's radical honesty or just maybe a little more human honesty, but it's not uh, living by my personal truth. It's about like really wanting to um, live by absolute truth. Like whatever the absolute truth is, I just want to kind of like let go of myself and just hang with that. Okay. And so I thought, okay, so uh, that would be the thinking, you know, so like that would be the virtue of thinking or reflecting is this honesty then what would be the external perspective internal perspective with regards to doing so then i came upon well there's caring and there's duty okay so you have a duty to do something um that's kind of like this loyalty or justice it's in the same kind of vibe uh, it's external this is externally defined this is your duties right but do you gonna now you could care about them or not? Uh, you can do them either way. You know, you can fulfill all your duties and not care, but it's just kind of like just make sure you do them, right? No one's saying you have to care, right? Like you may be a I may I may be a slave, or I may be you know working a job that's very menial, or maybe 
which is not interesting, but perhaps even not dignified. It depends on, the, there's all kinds of circumstances. Uh, I don't have to care. But caring is where I take it to heart. I say, I will internalize this duty. I, I don't want to have it imposed on me. I'd rather me live it as if it's just flowing out of me. Okay. So that's just a different attitude. Um, and I wrote, uh, I co-wrote a paper uh, on economy for giving everything away with my dear uh, elder and friend, uh, Brother David Allison Bay. And that was a key uh, idea that uh, money can bring us people together, but you can't pay somebody to care. Okay. If they care, that's on them inside, right? Money is an external motivator. Caring is an internal motivator. And you can't get an internal motivator from an external motivator, right? Because, and you really, so you really can't get people to care. That's the predicament of being wealthy, is that uh, it doesn't help you get people to care. So then it becomes very problematic. They, they care about your money, you know? <laughs> They're not going to care about anything. Um, and they'll, you know, you give them money, they'll show up. They'll, they'll perform, so to speak, uh, in the performance type of sense. But do they really care? uh not in terms of i mean that that's on them so all the jobs which people really care are going to be underpaid you know because you have to care in order to be a uh, a caregiver in, or in order to be uh, nurturing somebody teaching somebody uh washing cleaning somebody you know nursing somebody being uh even a good doctor a good uh priest or or uh, or religious uh, uh servant uh, being um you know raising children you have to care that that means that you're there for people uh and if you don't care then um then you're not going to um well be able to do the job but see you'll get paid if you show up if you show up they can't fire you you see if, if you just kind of like go through the motions you get paid for doing the motions that's not caring okay so so you're going to be underpaid because you care and no one will know that you care until they remove the payment then they'll see who keeps working for free or for less that's why they're underpaid because they're working for less it's a sad thing about the economy it's an important thing to realize so um this is practical you know this is uh th that that's why you know this isn't just algebra this is this is algebra or 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 you know pre-algebra let's say like structural thinking that's communicating, expressing reality, as far as I can tell, and deep reality. That's why, and it's helping. You, you can see, like, these patterns are helping to uh, bring out, oh, flesh out, oh, this is what's missing. This is what needs to be recognized, right? Plato had a third of the story. St. Paul had a third of the story. And I'm giving another third of the story so we can have all three, right, and be cognizant of them all. And so then what is this feeling that would be like a feeling of being, Right? So it's kind of like love, it's kind of like beauty, but what is this feeling of being that relates to duty and caring and honesty? And so I think of it as intimacy, right? When you just feel that you're loved by your parents, let's say, right? You know, you're 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 in a place that's uh that's uh safe. It's it's not even maybe the feeling so much that you're loving somebody else. You know, you love, that would be a love, but like the feeling that Oh, I'm in an environment that is secure and safe and warm and cuddly, right? The cuddly environment, that's intimacy. Cuddliness, we could call it, right? Or just, uh, just this uh, warmth. So just like my sweater, very warm. So my sister gave me that. That's very nice. So, okay, so then these are the three things. And then let's talk about, uh, oh, but let's talk about the key thing. Let's go back and just see, uh, well, here are the arrows. I guess maybe that's what I want to say. This is the whole point of it now. This is the conclusion, you know, drum roll. And that in this setup, there's the human side of it is what I've been talking about, this internalizing. Okay, so instead of this external perspective, what if you internalize that, what happens? 
Well, it means that, you know, you are living a different life. You know, you've kind of prepared yourself in a different way, right? You've internalized this. So you now you're now life has become real. It's the meaning has entered from your side. You know, you've invested, you've, um, I guess, uh, you, you, you've given life the dignity of having meaning. Maybe that's the way to say it, right? And so then what happens? Well, when you experience feelings and they're fleeting you know of because you know they could be positive or negative but when you when you experience the positive ones it could be like beauty or it could be the love or it could be the intimacy right then you will inter you will immortalize that like that will it's like you'll resonate okay so in the case of plato like when you feel this beauty right That'll resonate with courage, okay? And you will do the right thing. You know, you will follow through because the beauty will just kind of like, you are all primed. You primed yourself by being obedient, by really taking the heart that, you know, I, 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 I'm obedient. I'm a part of the living justice of this, uh, of this polis, this sta city state. Well, then when beauty overwhelms me then i will respond with courage you know to fight or struggle or 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 uh or win you know or compete or or just work you know for um uh, or take the pain you know or resist the pleasure but i will be able to do these things um uh, because I, just by design you know that feeling that um uh, emotion which is fleeting and comes and goes it's like a gift from god right but that'll be immortalized in me like that moment that'll become a moment of courage it will go into my virtue treasure chest okay and it will never go away like those are the moments where we live forever you know and ever and ever in the afterlife or in the pre-life or wherever that be but that will never go away those were those were the moments that were meant to be right and we prepare those moments by internalizing the justice as obedience. And then that resonated with us. Uh, the beauty kind of struck us like a chord, you know, and then we it plucked us like a string. And then we sang out with our courage. That's the model, okay? So it's a conversation between the human and God, you know, uh, between the earthly and the heavenly. And so that is the meaning of life, you know, that you you're participating in this harmony that's transcending, the harmony is transcending um, this earthly realm. It's becoming immortal, these, these immortal atoms of virtue, right? That are just there forever, right? They've, they found their kind of like immortal form, right? And we've kind of like uh, found our uh, resolution in that. And so similarly, like, you know, if you, go from loyalty to really believing, right? Uh, then uh, you will, uh, so it's like you're transforming your mind, you know, whatever, whatever you're believing in, it may be, it, I guess it, what this is saying, it's not really that important. It could be a person, it could be a principle, it could be a, a, gr a group of people. Uh, it could be very questionable, you know, all these things. But the kind of like that's not important because when you feed that, the love will will make you resonate with the hope, you know? It's it, that you will you will have hope, you know, when you feel like that, you'll feel the love and that'll give you hope. Maybe it's hope that you're understood. Maybe it's hope that this law makes sense. Maybe it's hope uh, that uh, things will come true. Right. And maybe it's a scientific type of hope that uh, this this will yield a result. Right. That maybe people will benefit, whatever. So whether your religion is science or whether it is, uh, you know, Harry Potter or whatever it could be. But the idea is that when you, if you believe, you know, in Santa Claus, right? But, uh, <laughs> but that the love will give you hope, right? That, that, that this is, uh, okay? And so then the same, like if, if, if you take your duties and you actually, you know, go to work and you're caring and you operate from that as opposed to from duty, then when you feel this um, intimacy, um, whenever you do feel intimacy, you know, it's kind of like a random thing. But you'll have primed yourself to be honest. You know, you'll feel comfortable 
it's, I mean, you'll just, it'll just happen. You know, you will blurt out, you know, or you will be frank, or you will make an effort to say how things are, to give your testimony, right? And that moment will be forever, regardless of the consequences. That cannot be taken away. So we internalize, and the simplest way to say it is God immortalizes, and that is the meaning of life. And that is all about harmony, because um, these are uh, justice and loyalty and duty. I would say those are all harmony. Justice is, you know, harmony in the external sense, and it's an external perspective on that harmony, right? Obeying is kind of like becoming a participant in that harmony, you know, by, by a willful participant. Uh, duty is kind of like the internal world. You know, what you need to, um, you know, so it's the harmony in terms of like your internal requirements, you know, that's been put on, you know, maybe, but, but it's, um, it's still like, a, it's an external structure, you know, it's, a, it's an imposition. And so caring is, um, caring is uh, living not from that imposition, but living from the one who's imposed upon, you know, to say, hey, no, no, no I'm going to. Um, I'm going to have it come from myself. I'm going to turn it around. And then loyalty. So I think, and you know, I may, this may be an error. I would have to maybe think again. But I think, uh, and and in the next video, we'll be analyzing all these sets of values and virtues. These kind of like you know, you can see they're they're groups of threes and and, and groups of fours. We'll analyze that more. But I think that that's uh, uh, external with regard to the inside. And then loyalty is connecting those two worlds, the inside and the outside. You know, how is my inside connected to the outside? And th so that's a third kind of harmony, right? And saying, no, no, I'm going to do it in terms of believing. So that's what I wanted to say. That's the meaning of life. Um, and then we'll uh, look more carefully, uh, variously. I mean, there's all kinds of things to be said about these, uh, you know, about beauty, love, and intimacy in terms of this how they fit in the context of the emotional life, uh, obeying, believing, caring. These are ways of following the will of God, uh, justice, loyalty, duty. Um, maybe I just uh, talked about that. Uh, then, like I said, uh, we'll think of it from another way. We'll kind of flip it around, look at more research. Um, I am Andres Kulikauskas. You know, um, this is uh, my life. I'm trying to share these uh whole language. Uh, I invite you to uh, join our discussion group uh, at the mathwisdom.com website. You'll find uh, how to do that and also at the uh, description below this video. And so if any of this resonates, please leave comments and let me know. Um, and I just uh, pray for you to have a meaningful life. Thank you for watching this video. Please uh, go to mathforwisdom.com or simply read the description to this video to learn how you can join our Math for Wisdom discussion group and our study groups. Thank you for liking this video, for subscribing to this YouTube channel, and for supporting Math for Wisdom through Patreon. I'm getting a lot out of Math for Wisdom, so for me to put in a few bucks every month, I'm not thinking twice about it. Uh, anybody who joins this group uh, is going to get a lot out of it. So why not throw a few books uh, through Patreon into the pot? Uh, Patreon's great. It makes it so easy to contribute. It's two minutes to set it up. It's done.